Afternoon all and um, welcome back to Birmingham Wildlife Conservation Park for the latest in our Wednesday Facebook Live videos. Uh, today we are carrying on our world tour. Uh, we're still in Europe um, this week uh, and today we are having a look at our European pond turtles. Um, so yeah, as ever, please feel free to send in any questions or comments you might have. Otherwise, I will um, yeah, I'll just tell you a little bit about these guys. Afternoon, Zena. Hope you're okay. Hi, Tiff. Hope you're all right. Right then. So yeah, we have uh, two groups of European pond turtles here at the wildlife park. Um, I am down with kind of our second group at the moment, who are down here in the pond just by our spider monkeys. So we've got our spider monkeys just here. Gucci showing off there. Um, uh, and then we also have our main enclosure kind of up um, in the middle of the park uh, around by the links um, but yeah we, we have we have the two groups here the two separate groups hi Mary hope you're okay uh, so this um, enclosure up here contains our females and our little breeding group well hopefully breeding group um, because this air uh this area does have um plenty of um uh land area uh on the on this one um which will allow them to come out and uh lay some eggs hopefully in the future which would be which would be great um so yeah so european pond turtles um the individuals we've got here uh, the oldest one that we know the age of is around about 11 years old, which is fairly young for um, for these guys. Um, uh, they can actually live up to about 80, 80 to 100 years or so. Um, so yeah, these guys are still fairly young uh, pond turtles. Um, Yeah, like I say, as with with quite a lot of turtle and tortoise species, they um they are rather long lived, and so so yeah, um these guys have still got a lot a lot of life left in them, which is which is good. Um, so the two individuals we can see out here at the moment basking in the sunshine, um, these guys are probably fully grown. Um, females tend to be a little bit larger than males. Um, there is quite a range in in kind of maximum size um, for um, for the species throughout their their native range. Uh, these guys are probably slightly on the smaller end of that range, um, maybe more towards the middle. Actually, they can get bigger and smaller. So, um, so yeah, um, yeah, these guys are fairly middle of the road, I would think. Hi Judith, hope you're okay. In total, I'm not actually 100% sure off the top of my head at the moment. Um, I would have to double check with the reptile keeper. Um, I think we've got around about 12 in total, but I could be wrong. I think there's about four down in this enclosure and then maybe seven up in the main enclosure. Um, but I'm not 100% sure on that, so I would have to double check. But I think it's around about 10 or 11, actually, something something like that. Um, yeah, there's more up in the main enclosure than, than down here. Um, so, so yes. Um, yeah, we've got a good number split between the two enclosures. Hi, Tim. Hope you're okay today. So the range of these guys uh, in the wild is throughout much of kind of southern and central uh, Europe. Um, from Portugal and Spain all the way kind of along through um, out to well out to Western Asia really um, they can be found in North Africa as well um, they, they like I say they cover the majority of Europe to be honest um, apart from they're not found in the UK in the wild um, kind of the northwest of Europe so um, Belgium Netherlands northern parts of france that area uh, and they're not found up in scandinavia um because it just gets a bit too cold up, up that way um but they are found throughout the majority of the rest of europe although their population um although their range is quite large the, the populations 
um, can be quite fragmented uh, within that. I know France has got kind of I think ten distinct populations, all of which are um, all of which are struggling. Um, so yeah, despite that large range, the, the population is fragmented. I think the largest ones, Tim. I think I read they can get to about thirty centimeters um, kind of length. Um, so not too much bigger than these guys, but um, you know these the shells of these guys are probably about the size of your hand, um, kind of spread out. So so yes, um, that is that is I think about the maximum size these guys can get. Now I did see a um, a question yesterday. Um, about the requirements for keeping them into a keeping them in a pond in the UK, um, it does depend on the species of turtle. Obviously, you can't put an exotic species of turtle in a pond in the UK. Um, European pond turtles are uh, well adapted to conditions um, such as we get in the UK. They do go through a kind of period of hibernation uh, in the winter called brumation, um, where they basically take themselves up to the bottom of the pool um, and completely slow their bodies down, uh, slow their metabolism down. Um, and yeah, basically hibernate through the coldest months. And they do start emerging again um, in in the spring, around about end of March, start of April. So it's not actually, we haven't been seeing these guys for, for quite a few months. Um, but yeah, now on sunny days, they're normally out basking. As you can see, we've got a couple of them out right now. Um, I'm not 100% sure on any kind of, physical um, differences between males and females, Tiff. I know females are normally slightly larger. Um, I think there is some coloration difference as well, but I can't remember which way around it is. <laughs> um, I think the yellow on the on the turtles is, is slightly more pronounced in, in one of the one of the sexes, but I'm not sure which one. Um, so so yeah. Um, but yeah females are normally slightly larger. I'm pretty sure the two that we've got out here are females at the moment. Diet-wise, these guys are omnivorous. Um, they're mainly quite carnivorous when they first hatch. Um, and then kind of go towards a more vegetarian lifestyle as they get older. Um, but they, they do eat um, a range of kind of aquatic invertebrates, invertebrates um, and uh, plant matter as well uh, throughout their lives. We feed kind of a turtle pellet here, um, alongside a bit of live food, things like, you know, uh, morio worms, mealworms and that kind of stuff as well. Um, and obviously they've got the vegetation that grows in the in the ponds to, to feed on as well. So these guys are classed as near threatened in the wild. Um, they, as I said, the, the populations are quite fragmented. Um, quite a lot of the populations are um, shrinking and struggling, like I say, um, the, the populations in France are definitely struggling. Switzerland, they became extinct. I think they've been reintroduced. Um, so yeah, they, they aren't doing brilliantly out in the wild. Um, or well, they've, they've got that large range, which means they, they aren't classed as being super endangered at the moment. Um, the main, um, issues these guys face are human interference, mainly through, um, the building of roads um, and the draining of, of central habitats. Um, this species of turtle can actually travel quite a, a long way um, on land. Um, so uh, when when roads are built in and around kind of the habitats of these guys, um, they're, when they go out wandering, um, they, they are a lot more likely to, um, to get squashed on the roads, unfortunately. So that's a major issue. Um, another issue for these guys is climate change. Um, the eggs, um, depending on the temperature that, that they're incubated at, um, it depends. Uh, that will kind of um, determine what sex the uh, little ones are. Um, so in warmer temperatures, as we are getting now, um, you're going to have a skewed sex ratio towards um, towards one sex. Um, as, yeah, I think the tipping point's around about 35 degrees. Um, and then you either get more males or more females. So, so yeah, that's a, another threat that these guys face um, in in the wild. Um, I've seen pond turtles um, kind of mixed with um, kind of waterfowl species and and um, 
other wading birds and things like that uh, in in other zoological collections. Um, I'm not sure how territorial they are. Um, if you could mix them with with other aquatic reptile species, um, but but yeah, they they seem to be able to to kind of live alongside uh, waterfowl and, and wetland birds quite well. Um, yeah, I've I've seen a, a couple of enclosures uh, in zoos with with these guys in. Hi Sue, hi Lorraine, hope you're both okay. Yeah, I'm quite glad we've got a couple out today. Um, the weather forecast has been fairly cloudy and miserable, um, so I didn't think we'd see anyone, but, but the sun has been out most of the morning, so they're out basking, which is nice. Right, guys, if you've got any last minute questions, please feel free to send them in. Otherwise, I will, um, I will wrap up in a couple of minutes. Yeah, they, they're, they're doing well, Mary, especially um, obviously, after after the winter, when they start emerging, it's good to see them come back out and um, and yeah, um, and looking looking so well. Um, like I say, we don't really have to do anything with these guys. We we do supplementary feeding for them, and that's pretty much it. Um, they kind of look after themselves and 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 sort themselves out, which is which is handy. Um, and yeah, like I say, we don't have to remove them over the winter. They they brumate themselves. Um, so yeah. Very low maintenance in these pond turtles. So yeah, next week we'll um we're actually um done with Europe already. We've only got a couple of European species here. Uh, so I think we're heading into North Africa next week. Um I think with the Northern Bald Ibis, but I can't remember for sure. Uh so I will um advertise that as ever next Tuesday. Well, that's a good question, Zena. I'm not sure um, how many eggs they lay in a clutch. Um, possibly 10 to 12. I think I read 10 to 12 last night, but I can't really remember, to be completely honest. Um, so, yeah. Um, I, I'd assume, as with kind of other um, turtle and tortoise species, they, they would lay a, a fairly large clutch of eggs, especially for something this size. Um, but, yeah. I can't remember the exact numbers, unfortunately. But I believe ten to twelve might be might be right. But I could be completely off on that. Just seeing if I can spot any of the others that, that live up in this pond. Ah yes, there's one there. So we've got two out basking on the log. I don't know if you can see. Just here, uh, where are we? Do you see his head there? So there's another one of the turtles up in this enclosure. Ah, thank you, Tiff. There you go. I knew there was some kind of coloration there, but I couldn't remember what it was. So yeah, females are darker, males have white and yellow markings. Right then, guys, I think we will wrap it up with the pond turtles there. Um, yeah, quite quite pleased that we've actually managed to see them today, so that's good. Um, yeah, like I say, we'll be um, we'll be back uh, next week um, with yeah the first African species um, of the of the world tour. Um, although, if we are doing all the more live, this technically they're in. Um, yeah, they're kind of a crossover species between Europe and Africa. But anyway, we'll, we'll have a look next week. Um, thanks for tuning in, everybody, and we'll see you next week.